A lone alligator gently glides its body across a shallow pool of murky water. Nearby, an anhinga spreads its wings, sunning its damp feathers. While these animals in Everglades National Park meander seemingly oblivious to the changes harming their habitat, scientists and activists who walk and work in this iconic Florida wetland do not. 20, 30 years ago, this area was open water. Bob Johnson has been studying the Everglades ecosystem for nearly 30 years. Well, it's our source of fresh water. We have drinking water in Miami, Dade, and Broward because of the amount of water that's left in the Everglades. The Everglades has shrunk to less than half its original size, and wading bird populations have diminished by over 90%, and that includes the egret you see behind me here at Everglades National Park. Longtime airboat tour operator Jesse Keenan has watched parts of this precious river of grass disappear before his eyes. When I was a boy, we could actually take an airboat and go from here to just south of Lake Okeechobee, jump into Miami River, go on to Lake Okeechobee. And you can't do that now because you got so many canals that are crisscrossed back and forth. About 1,400 canals and levees to be exact, explains Sarah Fain, an Everglades restoration activist. In the 1940s, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers implemented a huge program to contain the water in unnatural form so that population could continue to expand in South Florida. That means people and the endangered panther, along with all these animals, are competing for a finite water supply. Right now, I believe we have 68 species on the either endangered or threatened list, and this is directly related to this diversion of water because by destroying their habitat, they have nowhere to go, they have no food source. Activists say restoring normal water levels and flow in and out of the Everglades doesn't just help animals here, but impacts tourism. We take a flight 2,000 feet above Florida Bay, the southernmost part of Everglades National Park, where we spot patches of algae bloom on the surface. To the untrained eye, it may look normal, but this bloom actually kills off the plant life beneath it. Without plants, there are no fish, and fishing is the single biggest attraction in the Keys. Tourists have already gotten wind of the bloom, says J.C. McCula, who operates kayak tours along the bay. The severity of the bloom in terms of the location and the areas in which we're seeing it in the Florida Bay is by far more severe than any time in the past that I've been here in, in, in our, short, our short four years that we've been down here. In high definition, Jennifer Santiago, VOOM HD News in the Everglades.